I'm Jerry, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Saul. I've been a professional chef for the past 20 years. So today, I'm gonna to be making some chips with bacon guacamole. And it's really easy. You could be noshing on some chips and guac in 30 minutes or less. We're gonna make homemade tortilla chips and guacamole that is nice and chunky with a little bit of a kick. Today, I'm making pomegranate, mango, pineapple, chicharron, guacamole. And it's going to be amazing, just like everything I make. If I don't believe in myself, who, who will? <laughs> First, we're gonna get started on our chips. Today, we're gonna be using white corn tortillas. We're gonna slice them into eight little wedges. I'm going to start by making my own chips with corn tortillas, and I'm going to fry by myself. Can you imagine that? I'm gonna bake because, honestly, I'm a beginner. I don't trust myself around a frying pan. <laughs> Super easy process. All you need are some corn tortillas. I'm taking the tortillas, cutting them in half, and cutting them in half again, so I have something that's like this size. First, I'm going to start with the jicama sticks. Basically, what a jicama is, is a vegetable root. It tastes like a mix of potato, apple, and pear. All I'm going to do is zest the slime into a small bowl. I'm going to add a good amount of salt. So we're gonna get started with our lime. I just got one of these lime juicers recently and it has completely changed my life. And now I'm gonna make sticks, right? I want it to be like half inch or quarter of an inch. So this is thick enough. And this is when it becomes stick, like a french fry. And that'll be your stick for your guacamole. How do we keep this nice and crispy? Ice bath, just. And we're gonna mix this with some avocado oil. Now I'm gonna spread this evenly across all of our tortilla chips. So for my other chip, I'm using a plantain. We call this the Mexico platano macho. So I'm gonna cut the edges here. We are going to put our fingers, maybe in a quarter of an inch, and kind of cut it through, through that side. Now we're just gonna cut it over here to help remove the skin. And voila. I'm gonna grab a mandolin. Should I close my eyes? I know. It's pretty crazy. But I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Everybody keeps saying that. And there you have it. A plantain. Oil is hot. One little tester in there, see how it goes. And kind of just dump it in there. And if you see a lot of bubbles, the more bubbles you see, the hotter it is. Just do one by one. We're gonna mix some sea salt now into this little tray here. Smoked paprika isn't really that spicy. It's just gonna give kind of like a smoky, salty added flavor thing. I'm gonna set them on a wire rack to cool. And also that allows the extra oil kind of drain out of there. Look at that, super easy. Took like less than a minute. We're gonna power through these. So nice and cold, that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna wait for this batch to finish, then so I can keep adding more. All right, so our chips are ready to go into the oven. I've preheated it at 350 degrees. Follow me. <laughs> now, as I'm taking these out of the oil, while they're still hot and warm, I'm gonna start seasoning them with my lime and salt mixture. So not too, too much, but just enough to kind of give them a nice coating. The oil will absorb the salt, and the salt will stay longer. So, my chips have been in the oven for seven minutes now, and it's time to get them flipped. So, the other chip that I'm using for my guacamole is chicharron. Basically, it's a pork skin, and this has been dehydrated for more than eight hours. I'm going to defry this, and this, I'm gonna use this as my plate. No one wants to wait to eat chips and guac, they want them now. Okay, that's it, can't wait any longer. And this is what a chicharron should look like, and should sound like, the sound of happiness. All right, so our chips are flipped. We're gonna get them back in that 350 degree oven and we're gonna cook them for another seven minutes. I'm just gonna give them one last hit with the lime and salt mixture. Easy, chips are done. I'm gonna get to work on my mix-ins. I'm going to start with a Serrano chili. Now, I don't want my guacamole to be like crazy hot, like I'm not using habanero peppers here. This is just enough and um, I like the flavor on this and I think one is, one is just fine. I'm going to grill the pineapple, and because I want to add some char to my to my dish. When you do this, make sure you cut like a nice piece of thick skin, so you don't have those dots in here. No one likes to eat those. I gotta tell you, never confident about my knife skills, but I'm getting better every day. <laughs> I'm gonna cut the onion. I know a lot of people use white onions for their guacamole. I just prefer sweet onions in general. Daniel, please, I'm just one call away, man. One text, be like, hey, dude. I'm all about like a little bit of, I don't know, brightness in my meal, so it's sweet onions for me. <laughs> but again, Daniel, do what makes you happy, buddy. Half of the onion, 
Also goes into the blender. Our pineapple is ready, so I want it to be a medium size. It's just like cooking a steak. Make sure you have enough salt, pepper on both sides, and then just grill it. That's the sound of delicious guacamole. So I'm gonna add our pieces of bacon in there now. I think you can use as much or as little as you want. While this is cooking, we're gonna start with our tomato. We're gonna dice this up into small little dices. Next is lime. Literally just squeeze the lime juice in here. If you're cooking something on your grill for your friends, once, three minutes, once, three minutes, that's it. You got these beautiful marks. You look like a rock star. Last but not least, cilantro. So I wanna take, I would say maybe like a third of a cup. All this gets blended up, very simple. We have this beautiful pineapple. Little dice for my guacamole. My guacamole is going to be chunky. Yeah, I know, chunky like you, chef. Yeah, chunky like me. I love onions. Onions always add a nice, just kick to anything I eat. I got two Roma tomatoes here. I'm basically just gonna dice these down, leaving the seeds in. So let's do this fast because we're in the restaurant business. Everything has to be fast. There we go. Grilled pineapple for my guacamole. I think I'd be open to having fruit in my guacamole. I myself am deathly afraid of spicy things, but I'm not afraid of jalapenos. Hot tip, you wanna make sure you get no seeds in this if you're not a spicy person. That's what makes it spicy. All right, so let's start with the mango. It's gonna add the sweetness that I'm looking for. Little dices on my guacamole. I've had a lot of people give me tips and tricks on how to like deal with garlic. The one I found that works the best is just cut the ends and it'll help you get that skin off. Beautiful mango. Now limes. This is how you get a lot of juice out of your limes. You squeeze the crap out of them. Now, I wanna use my hands, but since we're here in America, we're gonna use this because we make everything easier here. Wow, welcome to Bacon City. All right, so now habanero. I was looking for a really hot pepper that would stay away from the jalapeno and serrano, which are very normal to use on the guacamole. So I want it to be something really spicy. Now let's do some onions. I'm using white because it has more bite to it. So our bacon is set. Let's get into these avocados. Now onto the fun stuff. This is a Dominican avocado. Now, it is not the traditional avocado used for guacamole, but I kind of want to try them out today. Yeah, it's meaty, it's huge, but it, it has too much liquid. I think they'll be just fine. We have four Haas avocados today. Why Haas? Because Haas is universally the best avocado to use for guacamole. How do you choose the best avocado? You kind of just go around, you kind of push it down a bit, and if there's a little bit of a give, I think that's perfect. Can you imagine someone grabbing you and be like, oh, I want to make sure you're right. You're good for me, right? You don't do that to somebody. Why you do that to the avocado? Also, not very green. It's pretty dark, it's pretty brown, it's pretty ready. I remove this part. And when I do that, you see the color, the yellow? This means that this avocado, it's perfect. If it's too brown, that's it, you have a really ripe avocado. And if it's too green, it needs more. Bam. Now this pit looks pretty ready to come out, but if it wasn't, knife again, right to the top takes the pit out for you. I'm gonna rip the seed out. See you later, seed. You're welcome. We wanna cut it into dice, so you have to be gentle and careful. I'll do it fast because I'm a professional. But these, they feel a little different. I'm gonna try this a little bit. They're almost like a little sweet. I kinda like this. Okay, perfect. I think we're all in good hands now. We're almost ready to make the best guacamole you ever see in your entire life. To mash up these avocados, we're gonna use a good old potato masher. I like using a whisk. Personally, a whisk is perfect because all everything can easily fall off of it and it's got a uh, bigger surface area. Let's begin with our Mexican blender. I have two types of molcajetes here. Obviously, this is from a machine. It comes from a machine because it's almost perfect. We're not gonna use this today, so what I'm gonna use, molcajete from a volcano rock. This is the texture I'm looking for. If you wanna make it smoother than this, go for it, but I'm happy. This looks good to me. Notice, again, I don't want an overly creamy guacamole. This still has some big chunks in it. Now I'm gonna start throwing stuff in here. I've got my Roma tomatoes, diced onions going next. So we start with the onions, a little bit of salt, smashing time. I don't want you to eat my guacamole and have a chunk of onion. I'm gonna add my jalapenos and I'm gonna add my garlic. Everything looks good here. Mexican oregano. It's got sort of like a, a citrusy lemon flavor to it. And this is chili powder, which will give it a little bit of a kick. I don't wanna add too much. I'm just gonna start mixing this together. Now I'm gonna add some cilantro. Now let's marrow this thing too, because I wanna get the flavors out of the cilantro. Now I'm gonna start scooping some of this serrano chili onion cilantro into the base of my guacamole and mix that in. 
Now all we have left to add to our guacamole is our cilantro and lime juice. And we're just gonna juice one and a half limes. I like to be generous with the salt. I don't know, I feel like Chef Frank, he taught me about the, the importance of salting your food. Now let's add the habanero. Yeah, it's for me, so I'm just gonna add two pieces. So now you have cilantro, the habanero. And this is how the Aztec used to do this. Now. This is definitely gonna stir the pot a little bit. White beans. They've just been something that I've been throwing in my guacamole lately, because like I said, I like a hearty, chunky guacamole. I know people are gonna fight me on this. Beans and guacamole, I don't know, but how I feel about that. No, it does bother me for some reason. I would like beans in my guacamole. God damn it, Daniel. I love you, man. The last thing I'm gonna add um, is more cilantro. I am gonna dice this up nice and small. So we have this paste now. Now, the avocado. We dice it that way because we want chunky avocado. So now I'm gonna smash this a little bit. Even though the consistency is not as chunky and thick as you would get with a Haas avocado, I think these avocados worked great. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Now we're gonna add the fruits. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of mango, a little bit of pineapple, and pomegranate, yes, pomegranate. Look at this beauty. And now it's gonna be lime time. I know, pomegranate sits on your guacamole, that's right. This guacamole is full of surprises. I think it's gonna need salt before I try it. That's it, doesn't need anything else. One of the most important things that I always tell my cooks and my wife and everybody that cooks with me, it's presentation. I'm gonna try to avoid getting any guac splash outside of the center of the glass. And look, it's nice and chunky. So let's start with the chicharron. I'm gonna use this as a plate. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle. See, that's already crazy. Now, we are going to scoop this on a rustic kind of way. See, it looks yummy already. So you can see these chips are nice and golden brown. They're also very crisp. And we're just gonna circle around our guacamole. The garnish for this is gonna be super simple. I like radishes. I think the color looks gorgeous. All you need is a couple little slices to make it look nice. <laughs> Man, this looked so much easier online. A little bit of pineapple. Now we're gonna add some mango. Spread out our chips a little bit. We're gonna add this right on top, just like that. Just a mountain of crumble. These little discs, super small, but they look really cute. I'm kinda of just gonna put them in the top up here. Bang. And this, this is gonna be the rock star of the dish. The pomegranates. Oh my gosh, this looks beautiful. Now, we're gonna add some queso fresco. Queso fresco, Basically, it's very similar to a ricotta, but a little bit more on the firm size. Last and never least are lime wedges. Last but not least, I always like to hit it with one last squeeze of lime. I'm gonna do a squeeze of lime over everything. Cilantro macho. Now, this is a normal cilantro. You normally find this everywhere. This you don't find it anywhere. You have to know a guy like I know a guy. I love to use this because it has more flavor. There is more, right? Plantain chips. Now we're gonna make some room and we're gonna have some jicama sticks. And this is my chips and guac. And this is my chips and guacamole. And this is my chips and guacamole. Moment of truth, let's see how this is doing. The crunch between the bacon and the chip is really satisfying. The texture is different from normal guacamole that I'm used to, but it's like lighter, a little airier. I'm gonna keep eating until they tell me to stop. It's everything you want in a guacamole. It's spicy, sweet. You're eating the chicharron, is just crunching. It's like eating potato chips or crunching. You chew into the pomegranate and be like, whoa, well, what's going on? This is just something out of this world. You're welcome. Chips and guacamole are perfect together. They make the best snack, starter, or even standalone meal. Let's see what each of our three chefs did with theirs. Jerry and Daniel both used store-bought corn tortillas cut and seasoned. These tortillas are made from wet milled corn that goes through a process called nixtamalization. Corn is steeped in an alkaline solution of calcium hydroxide, also called lime. The alkaline solution softens the cell walls and allows proteins in the corn to bind together. After steeping, the corn is stone ground and kneaded. This results in the smooth, pliable masa, which then gets made into tortillas. Delicious. Yeah. 
Saul made jicama sticks as another vehicle for dipping. The jicama plant is a vine that can grow 20 feet or more. It's persistently crunchy due to cross links of phenolic compounds in the cell walls that increase strength and stability. I know it's different, but it's delicious. All three of our chefs use various chili peppers to add a unique flavor and heat to their guacamole. The spicy pungencies of chilies come from compounds called capsaicinoids that are synthesized by the seeds and cells on the surface of the pale, spongy ribs or placenta inside the chili. Spiciness is rated in Scoville units, which is based on an alcohol extraction of the capsaicinoids. Jerry used jalapenos, which are small, deep green with a shiny appearance because they're usually harvested young. They range from 3,500 to 8,000 Scoville units and taste a little fruity and grassy. Daniel used Serrano peppers. They look and taste a lot like jalapenos, but they're a little longer and thinner. Their heat is a little bit delayed, but is very powerful as it ranges from 10,000 to 23,000 Scoville units. The guac will be nice and chunky with a little bit of a kick to it. Saul used habaneros, which are some of the hottest peppers grown. They're small and orange and are rated 100,000 to 300,000 Scoville units. They're so hot that it's hard to sense anything other than the heat and beautiful orange color. If you did remove the heat, you might taste fruity, melon-like, citrus, and guava notes. Avocados are the star of any guacamole. They're extraordinary fruits in that they contain only traces of sugar and starch and are very high in fat, which is why they're luscious and creamy when ripe and smashed or pureed. Jerry and Saul used Haas avocados from Mexico. They have a textured peel that's very dark green. The flesh is lighter green, sometimes as light in color as celery. They're higher in fat and lower in water than other varieties, making them perfect for guacamole. Daniel used a Dominican avocado, which is larger than the Haas and has a smoother green peel. It's much lower in fat and fiber while higher in water, resulting in a flavor that's milder than the Haas. It's his guacamole, so he make it his own way, okay? Stay out of these people. Jerry used a potato masher while Daniel used a whisk and fork. These tools work well, but Saul used his beloved and traditional mocajete and tejolote to make his guacamole. Some say the volcanic rock also adds a flavor dimension from the various minerals that it imparts. That's the best thing. Chips and guacamole are a perfect combination of crunchy and smooth, spicy and sweet, with beautiful color. Next time you're in the mood for this delectable dish, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three marvelous chefs.